The Joint Forces Air Component Commander, or JFAC, has tasked your Combat Rescue Helicopter Squadron to stage out of pop-up airstrips, which are isolated, accessible, and hundreds or possibly thousands of miles from the main base. You can leverage this location to launch your aircraft even further into contested regions to support combat operations, and because of its very temporary status, lodging and communications infrastructure don't exist. Or, the JFAC has ordered you to support an area roughly the same size as Boston, west to Albany, and south down to Miami which is around 246,000 square miles. To solve these geographical problems, you preposition your helicopters, maintainers, and extraction force all around the area of responsibility to more effectively support the service members most at risk, which changes every three to five days. In both examples, you have relatively safe places to stage on or near landing strips, but you don't have food, shelter, or connectivity to receive in updates or intelligence. You do have C-130 support, and they've got a culture of if it fits, it ships, but you don't have any support once you get there. How do you most effectively and repeatedly make the mission happen? You adopt the concepts and techniques of the overlanding community. The overlanding community has spurned the development and production of the lightest, most durable, and most versatile solutions on the market. They've integrated these products on various versatile off-road platforms. The key to success is ruggedness, durability, versatility, quality, efficiency, and most importantly, value. These systems are self-contained, self-propelled, and ready for anything. The only modifications we'd need to make is the integration of compliant, compatible, robust, and resilient communications and information technology systems, which are all modular and in the Air Force inventory now. By adopting the systems and solutions of the overlanding community today, we achieve the agility necessary to win now and tomorrow. The overlanding community says, when you take your overlanding system, there's no real destination. The goal is to become reliant on your vehicle for transportation and the gear you pack for shelter. Everything you need should be available within your system. You should be equipped to tackle all types of weather and any type of terrain you face and any challenge that comes your way. What overlanders do is eliminate the logistical barriers to their adventure. Airmen will use the same technology and techniques to eliminate the logistical barriers to projecting combat power forward to truly austere locations for short duration basing with the intent to project air power even further. What you're about to see is an example of an overlanding system. Jim McDonald is a 13-year veteran of the United States Marine Corps. He's used to being out in very austere locations. Here's what his rig looks like. Up here I've got a 6 by 8 foot awning. I've got a two-person tent up top. I use solar to, to power up everything. For my comms I have a CB. It's four-wheel drive, lockable differentials. But on this thing I can survive for a week for two people. Perfect for overlanding if you had a four-door Jeep. It would be four doors plus the trunk space and the top. That's going to be my next upgrade, the Jeep Gladiator. 